Hi everybody, it's a new week, so that means it's a new project. So I'm going to carry on with the inlay series like I have the last two videos. And this time I'm going to take pewter, cut a groove in the rim of this bowl, and pour it in the bowl. So this is the walnut bowl. Um, pewter melts at a low temperature, so you can uh, use a propane torch and a ladle, and then pour it into the groove and it doesn't scorch the wood, or at least it doesn't in walnut anyway. Um, so, before we go any further though, I'd like to take the time to thank my subscribers for first of all subscribing to my channel and liking and sharing my videos. From the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, that's what this week's project is. And um, yeah, so this was trimmed probably a couple of months ago. Uh, it's, it was down to 7% out of the fridge kiln and I've got a glue block uh, with hot melt glue on the bottom of it. So we'll get this mounted on the lathe, get it trimmed up, sand it, and then we'll go to um, pouring the pewter into the bowl. Uh, the great thing about pewter is if it does spill into the bowl, it doesn't stick to the wood. So you'll be able to take it right out and reuse it. So it's great that way. Um, so anyway, that's what this week's project is. Stay tuned, should be fun.
Okay, so before I cut the groove in the rim for the pewter, I just wanted to talk about sanding. Uh, so as you see in the video, I power sand everything. If you have the opportunity to power sand, I highly recommend doing it. It will give you probably a better finish. No, it will give you a better finish. Um, so in the video, I started at 60 and I worked my way through the grits until I hit 320. I start with the lathe in the forward position and the drill in reverse. And then for the next grit, I reverse the lathe and put the drill uh, in the forward position. And I keep doing that through grits, uh, backwards and forwards, and that will, give you, will also give you a better finish or a better surface for your finish as well. So the pewter uh, doesn't have the adhesion qualities that glue does. So when you inlay it, if if the groove you cut in the rim is straight, there's probably a very good chance that that pewter is going to come out. So when I cut the groove in the rim, I cut it like a keyway, like this. This being the bottom of the bowl. So there's no way that that can actually come out over time. Um, if you're using CA glue to hold an inlay in, I mean, you can cut a groove like this, this being the bottom, and it's not coming out. CA glue will hold stuff unbelievably. So I'm going to be using this. Um, that's a parting tool. And again, this is probably, if you've been turning for a while, this is going to get on with it. But anyway, that's next. I'll cut the groove and then we'll pour the pewter. Hmm, that's not going to work. I need a new blade. That's better. It's tougher than it looks. There, that was easy. Okay, so now that we have a chunk of pewter cut off that will work, and some of you may be asking why I didn't uh, put something like a piece of cardboard underneath of it to catch the shavings. Uh, the problem is with the hacksaw, it will always leave paint behind, and I don't want that contaminating the inlay. So, and the other thing too is, that's a 10 pound block of uh, lead, uh, lead free pewter. And usually I only get them in one pound blocks and they're easier to cut. So that, well the next time I'll be using a zip saw to do that. <laughs> Let's just say that. So anyway, that will go into with a ladle. I'll use the torch. This will eventually melt. I'll try and it's going to be tough to do because I've got different camera angles and I'm going to need to zoom the camera in when I pour it. Uh, but one of the most important things is that the bowl is level. Because of course when this is 
liquefied liquid will always find level so it's important that your bowl is, is level and the other thing too is when I pour it in there's probably a good chance that I'm going to spill some so I'm going to try and pour it in here that way at least I'm out of the camera's view and uh, well, anyway let's get this done and see how it goes I don't know how long this is going to take There it goes. There, that's good and hot. Okay, wish me luck. And I just keep pouring until it comes all the way to the surface. In this case, it seems to stop, so then I'll move over here. And if it's above the surface, that's okay. That's fine. The rest of this, I will just leave in the ladle. And um, yeah, I'll remelt it whenever I do the next one. You can see it's smoking a little bit. Uh, and it may discolor a little bit on the inside and then the outside on the end grain. But after it's sanded again, you'll never see that. Try and zoom the camera here. So yeah, it's a little proud of the surface there. That's good. That's the way we want it. Yeah, I was really hoping to zoom in while it was pouring, but yeah, it's awful hard to do by yourself. Anyway, I'll leave that for about, um, I don't know, maybe a half hour, and it should be fine. And we'll trim this all back, sand it, and get our first coat of finish on it. Okay, so we're going to cut this back, and yes, you can cut it back with a gouge. So I'll just cut it back. It's I'm going to have to go below where the wood is because it's kind of domed. So I'll probably go about a uh, sixteenth of an inch into the wood and hopefully that'll be nice and flat then and then we can proceed to sanding and uh, I think usually I start at 120 on these inlays and um, finish at 320 or maybe possibly 400 and then I might even use a uh, steel wool on it to just give it a nice bright shine before the finish goes on.
Okay, this is uh, the first coat of finish, the best part. And I say that in all my, <laughs> my videos of finishing them. So, again, this is salad bowl finish and it's put into squeeze bottles. Squeeze it on these little rags if you're not, if you haven't been on my channel before. Uh, this will get typically three coats. I'll completely saturate the bowl heavily with it, the first coat. And then uh, I should be able to do the second and third coat tomorrow. And then I'll cut it off the waste block, finish the bottom, and that's it. It'll be done. So what I like to do is dial my lathe right down. I have the luxury of a variable speed lathe. And uh, just flood it on. And again, if you haven't been here before, I am a shiny finish guy. I find that Shiny finishes typically sell better than dull finishes like mineral oil or uh, mineral oil beeswax combinations. Uh, they certainly have their place in the world. Uh, the one thing that I really like about this finish is that it um, it's maintenance free. This will get three coats and it's very very durable finish. It takes a lot to scratch it and you can use this thing for years and it'll look as good as the day it was bought. So again, I'll just keep rubbing this in. And as you can see, it really brings the wood alive. And then between uh, coats, I'll use uh, either 4-0 steel wool or uh, scotch bright pads something along those lines to kind of take any fuzz out and kind of cut the finish back to the oh, there's lots of bugs in there cut the finish back to the wood and then reapply and then do the same thing for the third coat and usually that's all it takes so here we are on the back side So yeah, I'll keep putting this on, saturating the surface until it won't take no more. And most times if it uh, doesn't, you know, if it's not like massive amounts of it sitting on the surface of the bowl, I'll just give it a quick wipe. Uh, it will absorb into the wood eventually. And like I said, this is the first of three coats. Sometimes you can get away with two usually it takes three and you can see how it really darkens the grain and this is of course black walnut so I mean this is what we want There we go. That'll go into the uh, drying room and we'll put the second coat on tomorrow. So I was just getting ready to put the last coat on and I had this bowl out in the sun curing the second coat. Uh, so I put it back on the lathe like I always do and started it up and uh, just about lost the bowl and what had happened was it had got so hot in the sun that it actually melted the glue. So this isn't a big deal. I'll just open this up and put some more hot melt glue down inside of there, squeeze it back together and we'll be good to go. But uh, geez, just about lost her. This is the only problem with this type of technique 
but I really like using this technique because I can do the inside and the outside of the bowl completely um, right till it's finished stage and then just simply cut it off and finish the bottom separately. Okay, so here we go. I think for a little bit of reassurance, I'll run a bead around here too. Okay, I think we're good now. A little bit of movement there. I'm just gonna go easy with the, uh, the 40 steel wall, so should be all right. It's all good. Okay, last coat. One thing's for sure, I sure probably won't need the parting tool tomorrow to part this off the waste block. And I've used this method um, to do bowls for over 20 years. And rarely do I lose a bowl off of a glue block with hot melt glue. And I've tried a lot of different ways and I've found this way so far to be the best way. Sure, you can put a Face plate on the bottom of this, but then you're dealing with screw holes and you lose, you know, an inch or two of your bowl, the depth of it. This way I'm able to use the maximum amount of thickness in the, in the, uh, in the bowl blank. Here she is. Yeah, I was just lucky that I happened to uh, start with the 4 steel wool in the base of the bowl, or else I might have lost it right off of the right off of the glue block. And there would have been no project this week. There you go. Oh, one little dry spot right there. I can see it. Like I said, we'll take this off tomorrow. Finish the bottom. And get a look at it. In the meantime, back to rough turning. All right, so what do you think? I think I'm gonna be able to just push this off. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
maybe. Here we go. Time for some vacuum checking. Okay, so we got some um, bug holes here in the bottom of the bowl. I don't know what they are. Anyway, I'm going to use uh, Starbond's Black Medium. And then, of course, the uh, accelerator to cure it. And you can use dust from the bowl if you wish. That black outline is there, and I don't think it would go anywhere, so... And what I'm talking about is this. You're still going to see this even if you just use dust from the bowl. So you know what? I just like to fill it up with this stuff. So just keep filling up the hole until it won't take any more. There. I think that's good. Here, I'll wait a couple of minutes, throw that back on the lathe, trim it up again, and sand it. Well, that's it for this week's project. Give you a last few couple of looks at this. Not easy to film because it's so shiny. But yeah, we went to uh, 400 grit on this and then 400 steel wool. And then uh, three coats of finish. So uh, anyway, in the comments below, please let me know what you think. Uh, again, it's a beautiful walnut bowl. Can't go wrong with walnut. Again, it's so shiny. I'll put some pictures at the end. Uh, hopefully you can get a better look at this. And as you can see, got myself some new shirts. Sprag wood turning. It's too hot to wear the smock anymore. So anyway, that's it for this week's project. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, as always, please like and share, comment. Uh, I'm curious if you're doing inlays, what kind of inlays you're doing, and tell me what you'd like to see for an inlay next week. But anyway, that's it. Take care. Stay safe. Uh, hopefully we'll see you at the next one, and don't forget the little bell, you know, when I put up a video. See ya.